Hi, I'm now going to talk about what is meant by the phrase device hardening parameters. What does that mean and how does it relate to policies? Well, we have talked before in a previous video, which I'll link in the description, about what is meant by device hardening and the different techniques which fall under this. Really, device hardening is where you're trying to make sure your device has enough layers of security, making it as hard as possible for an attacker to break through multiple layers. So you harden your device by adding more and more different techniques in a layered fashion. Okay, so the ones I talked through are on the screen here. I won't go through each one again because I've got them covered in other videos, but there are different ways we can increase our security on devices. Some are suitable in some contexts, some are not suitable. It's a choice you've got to make as a security manager. Now, we can, as a policymaker, maybe as that manager, you might set certain parameters in your policies. So a policy might be created to outline how you can apply different device hiding techniques, so defining how they should be used, right? You could have a really expensive firewall as one of your techniques, but if you're not using it properly, it defeats the whole point, right? So policy might set out how it should be used. And within a policy, there should be some parameters and a parameter in this context is giving us some settings which are which need to be applied using that technique specified. So why is it important to set particular parameters in your policies? Well, users need to know what to do. You might have a non-specialist you know, having antivirus software on their computer and they need to know what settings to apply or what they should be doing. There needs to be some consistency. If you've got one person using one of the techniques one way, another person using it a different way, it creates weaknesses in your overall security. And of course, if you're not applying settings properly, that can be a vulnerability itself, right? You could have a really amazing firewall installed in all of computers, but somebody might disable it, or somebody might change a setting, which makes it much, much more weak. So as an IT manager, you should be outlining how exactly you are expecting the different techniques to be used, including the different settings, the different parameters of things in particular. And what I mean by that, if I can give some examples of the sort of parameters which might be set. Well, let's say you choose a firewall as one of your techniques. You might have a very quick policy saying how to install it, how to use it and so on. But you might also set some parameters. For example, you might outline which regions of the world should be blocked. There might be certain countries, certain continents, certain groups of websites which you are trying to block because you view them as being a threat potentially. And potentially you might outline any exceptions to the other rules perhaps specified in this policy. So those are two general potential parameters you might have in a firewall policy, along with all the specific settings for the more technical details. Another example, maybe for antivirus software, you might outline again how you set it up, how you use it, how you do scans, but maybe as a parameter, as a setting, you might state how frequently you are expecting scans to be made. If you're not stating this, it can lead to inconsistency. Maybe one employee is being really diligent and is scanning every single day. Another employee might spend or might do it every two months and so clearly that inconsistency might be a problem. If one of your hardening techniques is ensuring you've got good defensive software design, for example by checking inputs to websites but making sure nobody as a user is able to directly interact with a database, something like that. So you might in your policy set out how public facing forms should be set up. Are they obscuring certain entries, maybe passwords should get obscured with Asterixes. You might outline which inputs should have autocomplete disabled. That can be a security issue, as I talked about in the defensive software design video. But also, you might sort of decide what validation should be performed. Validation is checking any inputs to make sure they are valid, make sure they are sensible and are not malicious. There are different types of validation. You might validate based on length or the characters used or based on a range and you might want to outline it in a policy. And finally, as an example, encryption, there are loads of different settings which can be outlined in policies. So for example, the actual type of encryption being used, the algorithm being used, there are lots of different types of encryption, some of which are quite weak, some of which are quite strong. It's important as a security manager, you are deciding which one we're gonna use, a strong one, of course, and saying how to use it in a way which will play to its strengths.